I came across this article on XDA called I Regret Switching to Linux Even Though I Wanted to Love It, which lays out some of the pain points that people have when switching, specifically from some version of Windows to a Linux desktop. So I wanted to go through the points that were made here to help people out that might be having the same kind of regrets. The first point brought up is, of course, gaming. And they specifically mention Apex Legends, which dropped support for Linux in their online anti-cheat engine, which essentially meant that you couldn't play the online game from a Linux client anymore. Now, apparently, this change did cut down on a significant bit of the cheating. I don't have firsthand experience with this because I never played Apex Legends, but I'm well aware of other games with cheater problems and things they've done to try to fix the problems, but there's a few things that determine how bad cheating is going to be in a video game. First is, of course, how hard is it to cheat? If you ever played Flash games on sites like Miniclip back at the day and you looked at the high scores, you might have noticed that they were always maxed out. They were always all nines. And the reason was that you could hack all of those games by just changing the memory values in a tool like Cheat Engine. So everything was client side and not being validated on the server side. Now, in online multiplayer games, there's, of course, a split in how data is handled between the client and the server. So typically, things like a high score or your character's level is something that is handled server side. So it's not something that you can easily change client side. But things like the speed of your character or their position on the map, that can usually be changed pretty easily, which is how you get fly hacks and no clipping and things like that. Now, on the server side, you can still catch blatant examples of client-side cheats, like if someone teleports or jumps on top of a building and you know it's impossible for them to get up that high without cheats, then you could just ban them right away. But because of the way that information is transferred from the client, meaning the computer that the game is running on, to the online server, there needs to be some room for ambiguity because of things like drop packets. So someone might appear to teleport back or forward as they're running every few steps because their network is having intermittent problems. But obviously, if someone is teleporting around on purpose, like if they can activate this whenever they get into a gunfight, then that's going to give them a significant advantage in a fast-paced first-person shooter. So the only way to really stop cheaters is to have mods who know how the game works and who know how people try to cheat in the game so that they can spectate players and respond to reports in order to ban the cheaters. Automated anti-cheat solutions can make this process easier. They can catch a lot of the low-hanging fruit and might solve the cheating problem altogether if there's little incentive to cheat and especially to use advanced cheats, which is the other part of the cheating factor. So if someone gets caught cheating in a video game, the only real repercussions are them getting banned from the game, which essentially means that they lose whatever money that they spent on it. And sometimes people also get IP banned, but there's obviously ways around that. And so if the game has real world trading, meaning that people are willing to pay real money to get a weapon or a skin or even buy an entire account from someone else, then there's a monetary incentive for cheaters to produce those items or account, and if they can reliably make more money than the cost of a new game before they get banned, then they're just gonna continue doing it because those cheaters aren't cheating in the game for fun, they're running a business, a really crappy business, but still they're making a profit. And so again, the only way to really stop that is to have an active mod base that can ban cheaters before they can get anything out of the cheating. And this is why even after Apex Legends reworked their anti-cheat, which included dropping support for Linux, there are still cheaters in the game to this day. So it's not really true that Linux is bad for gaming. Most of the top games on Steam work flawlessly. And if a game is relying that heavily on anti-cheat engine, so much to the point that they're excluding desktop Linux and Steam Deck players, then that's a sign that they aren't living in reality because the most experienced cheaters they're laughing at the kernel anti-cheats. Next up in the article, he talks about the difficult learning curve of Linux and problems with drivers on external devices and on NVIDIA cards. Personally, I haven't had any issues lately with NVIDIA drivers on Linux, and 
If you're using a Just Works distro like Linux Mint, all you really have to do is check a box to install NVIDIA's proprietary drivers when you first set up your OS. Most of the code in the Linux kernel is actually driver code, and unless you're installing Linux from scratch and compiling your own kernel like it looks like he's doing here, then most of the devices are just gonna be plug and play. Now, of course, there's niche hardware that might not have drivers available for Linux at all, and that's a situation where you might be forced to use Windows in order to use that device. But you better make sure that your specialty hardware is compatible with Windows 11 as well, because support for 10 is gonna be ending very soon. And if you do need to go purchase new hardware, then it's gonna be a good idea to replace it with something that doesn't restrict you to using a spyware ridden operating system that you're forced to upgrade to more spyware every few years. Next, we have one of the classic lines about Linux that it's only free if you don't value your time. Or here he says that Linux is only free to an extent because you're gonna have to spend a lot of your time learning the command line and package managers and the new file structure and it's just this complicated mess that you have to be a computer genius to use comfortably. But the truth is, you can really avoid the command line on Linux for a very long time. There's GUI front ends, graphical user interfaces for the most package managers and most programs out there, especially on the easy distros like Linux Mint and Fedora. And the reason that people tend to use the command line on Linux is because it's actually quicker to install and remove packages or do just about anything that way. And that's something that you'd have to waste time configuring to administer your system through the command line if you wanted to have that easy package management on Windows because it doesn't just come out of the box like that. The Linux experience, on the other hand, can be molded to each individual user. It doesn't try to force you into a specific box like Windows does. And what usually ends up happening is once someone is really comfortable with the basics on Linux, they start customizing their desktop to better suit their needs. A lot of people end up using window managers that are very responsive and very light on RAM and resource usage, and they set custom key bindings so that they can quickly open and access every app and every tool that they need, and sometimes they even get it to the point where they don't need to use the mouse at all, which ends up saving them a lot of time day after day. And learning Linux really pays dividends because you're never going to be forced to learn another graphical interface or learn another workflow once yours is customized. The same can't be said for Windows because there's major layout and workflow changes each time a new version comes out. The next part talks about certain programs not being available and they specifically mention Adobe Photoshop. Okay, look, Adobe is an evil company. I feel like that's pretty well known at this point, but if you absolutely have to use Photoshop or Adobe Premiere, then I at least hope that you're making good enough money to where you don't even notice the rising subscription cost and price gouging that Adobe does. And it is possible, by the way, for you to get Photoshop working in Wine. That's actually something that they acknowledged in the article, but said that the real deal breaker for them was the shortcuts from GIMP and Photoshop not being the same and that they didn't want to go through the process of getting Photoshop to work in Wine. But I might honestly make a video on that process of using Photoshop. I haven't used Photoshop since high school, but uh, from what I've seen in the online guides, it really doesn't look like it's that difficult. Um, and finally, the last point that's brought up here in the article is the roughness of the Linux community not always being user friendly. Now, honestly, I think this take depends on what community specifically you're talking about, because the Linux community isn't just one unified group. I mean, each distro arguably has its own community if it's a popular enough distro. The one that might be pushing you the hardest to do your own research and read the fucking manual before asking questions is probably going to be Arch Linux, which is the main reason why I don't recommend Arch to noobs. And in general, it's just good practice anyway to look things up yourself before making a new post on a forum somewhere. So yeah, a nerd might make that point to you in a somewhat rude way if you're asking those kinds of questions with Linux. Um, but don't let these initial difficulties of using Linux scare you back into using Windows, because if you stick with it, 
you're going to save so much more time, so much money, and you're going to achieve a level of digital freedom that you would have never imagined. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.